Hey there guys, I'm Renee. I am the owner and artist behind Chicly Reclaimed Decor, and I am also a member of the Paint Couture creative team. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I created this weathered copper patina paint finish. And we are gonna be going over how to layer texture, stencils, decoupage, molds, and more to create this unique mixed media piece of furniture art with lots of tips and tricks thrown in along the way. So if that is something you're interested in learning, guys, stick around because that is what I will be going over today. So first things first, I'm going to remove this old hardware because unfortunately one of them is broken, so I will be needing to use different knobs for this piece. But I'm gonna make sure to store them all together for use on another project down the road. I'm gonna be using undiluted simple green cleaner to clean this piece really well. And then I'm going to give it a good scuff sand with a fine grit sandpaper to prepare it for this paint makeover. Um, be sure to wipe off any residual dust with a damp rag before you move on to the next step. So the inspiration behind this design that I've actually entitled Pennies from Heaven is this absolutely beautiful decoupage rice paper. It's called Celestial Gaze and it's by Whimsical Designs, which are now available on the All Paint Products website. And I will be putting links for all the products that I'm using here today down in the description, just in case I inspire you to pick up a paintbrush and do a little creating of your very own. So as I was saying earlier, we're going to be using a variety of molds to redesign this piece. And we're going to be starting with this beautiful trim by iFlex Wood Products. I was a bit inspired by Art Nouveau and Art Deco designs, and this trim really spoke to me. So we're going to be using this to accent both the top and the bottom on this jewelry box. So these are heat bendable moldings and they can be used for crafts or furniture, even interior design really. And I'm gonna start by using a heat gun to warm up this entire roll of trim. And I'm going to let gravity do its thing and assist me in this process, as you can see from this sped up video. Next up, I'm going to measure and then cut this trim to fit on the bottom of this jewelry armoire. Remember to measure twice so you only have to cut once. As you may be able to tell, the first mark on my trim was completely incorrect. So if I hadn't taken the time to do this step, I would have been in real trouble, especially considering I only have so much product to work with. So once I had double checked to make sure my measurements were correct, I marked a straight line. And then again, I used a heat gun to warm this mold up and I cut it with just a pair of kitchen scissors. I also like to sand any jagged edges smooth with just a 220 grit sandpaper. I ended up cutting three pieces, one for the front and on each side for the bottom of this jewelry armoire. And then I just went about gluing them in place with my go-to glue, Tight Bond Quick and Thick. And I'm just gonna wipe off any excess glue with a wet paintbrush. I'm gonna be using this iFlex Wood Mold 2858 and I'm gonna follow the same process to heat up and glue down this iFlex Wood product. I'm gonna be adding one on each leg here. For the top of this armoire, I want to wrap this trim around the corner. So after thoroughly heating it up, I'm going to bend and dry fit it first before adding the glue and then using clamps to secure it in place. After my glue had had time to dry about 24 hours, I came back through and I sanded the edges so they were not only smooth, but they were flush with the edge on the jewelry box door. And one more piece of this trim was added to the center to complete this intricate trim design. I made sure when adding that last piece that it was level and wasn't going to obstruct the top of the jewelry box from closing properly. Next up, considering the placement of your decoupage image, it is super important to think ahead as to where your hardware is going to be placed when you are considering where you're going to be putting this image. You do not want to get to the end of your project and have your hardware be right in the middle of the face 
or something like that, which is just really going to detract from the beautiful image that you worked so hard on. I'm going to be using Pankator's Italian Ivory and my trusty two inch synthetic brush to apply a nice white base for this image to go over. So that way all those beautiful colors and detail can really show through. Once dry, I'm going to be using a decoupage medium. You can use a top coat as well to apply this decoupage rice paper. Before you begin, make sure that your drawers are all lined up. And I'm going to be working a section at a time, brushing the medium under the design on one half and then using a plastic tool. You can use a piece of saran wrap as well to press the image down, making sure there are no air bubbles. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other, other half and then finish by brushing the decoupage medium over top of the entire design. I like to then use a sharp razor and I carefully cut the image along the edge to separate the drawers and then add more decoupage medium to that freshly cut edge and then press it in place. So next up, I'm going to be building a border around this image using a variety of different molds. And I'm going to be using Pinkator's Rapid Casting Resin to hand cast some of these cherubs and Art Deco accents. I personally like to weigh out my resin to make sure that I'm accurately mixing equal parts of both step one and step two together. I'm going to mix my resin for about 30 seconds once combined and then pour. You just have to wait about 10 minutes and then you are ready to demold. Thanks so much for watching this video up to this point, guys. I hope you're liking the content. And if you're new to the Paint Couture YouTube channel, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the tutorials that the Paint Couture creative team uploads. I knew for sure where I wanted this border to begin, but before I moved on to that step, I'm going to add some texture and a raised stencil design using Paint Couture's embossing medium and Chow Bella's Over the Hedge Texture Stencil. The nice thing about this project is that I want a lot of texture, so this stencil design does not need to be perfect. And I'm going to layer it just a bit over the edge of that decoupage paper to be able to blend that in easier later on. I'm going to use a tool with a straight edge. This is actually a burnishing stick from a redesign with Prima Transfer. But I'm going to use this to smooth this product over the entire stencil. Then I'm going to wipe off any excess before removing it. And then I'm just going to continue with that process. And I'm remembering to layer the stencil over the edge of that decoupage paper as I go along. Once the raised stencil is down, I'm going to add some amazing texture to this piece by stipling embossing medium on either side of this design. At this point, play around with it. Sometimes I like the texture by adding it with my finger, and sometimes I like it when I am using the wood tool to staple it on like I'm doing here. Once this step is done, I'm going to move on to the mold work again. So these molds on the doors here, I'm measuring to make sure that they are not only in the middle, but that the placement is the same on each side. I cannot stress enough how much a measuring tape is going to be your best friend when you are creating a design like this. It's going to ensure that you create an even design. And speaking of design, as you can see from these photos, I play around with the mold work and then take photos to keep track of each design concept until I find the one that I like the most. As you can see, I measured to find the middle on this drawer and then I placed my cherub mold there because I'm gonna be starting by gluing my molds in the middle and then working outward. For this top set of molds, I'm going to need to cut them in order for this drawer to open. So I'm going to add these resin cast molds directly to my piece after casting them. This way they're still a bit soft and I can more easily cut through them. Unfortunately for me, the penny molds were cured. So I used a heat gun to warm them up and then I cut them in half with a sharp knife. I also sanded the edges before continuing with the gluing process. As you can see, I added an iFlex rope trim, and here I'm using a sharp knife to cut it after warming it up, 
And then I am going to pull these drawers out and sand back that mold so that way they don't obstruct these drawers from opening and closing. And this is what it looked like when we were all done with the mold work on that middle section. And I'm also going to take some of this rope trim and add some other accents like here on the door and in other areas on this jewelry box. Once my mold work was officially complete, I just moved on to adding the texture and raised stencil design using the embossing medium to the entirety on this piece. If you want to try a way to achieve a really neat texture effect when doing your raised stencil work, try adding a small amount of the embossing medium in random areas on your piece before you add your stencil over top. Then just add your embossing medium as you normally would, but check out this really cool web-like texture it creates when you remove your stencil. After my embossing medium dried, I came through with Paint Couture's bonding and blocking primer and I added a coat over the resin molds to prepare them to be painted. And we are going to be laying down two coats of Paint Couture's carbon gray color. And this is part of their acrylic mineral line of paint. And this product has a built-in primer and a top coat, so it provides a super durable paint finish. I'm going to be using a small artist's brush to paint around this intricate mold work and I'm going to be using this color to also blend in the decoupage paper. I'm gonna be utilizing quite a few dry brushing techniques. This is where you have very little paint on your brush and then with a very soft hand, you brush over top of your design. I'm doing that along the edges of the decoupage paper to blend it in, wiping back any of this paint color that goes on too thick. This part seems daunting but the raised stencil and texture that we added really makes blending this image quite easy. Just take your time and don't let a project like this daunt you. You never know until you try. Right here is a good example of the technique that I'm using. I start by having my paintbrush fully loaded and I'm brushing the paint on the outside rope trim and edge. Then after most of that paint is off my brush, I start by lightly brushing over top of the raised stencil and the decoupage paper to subtly blend that in. And these are the results after blending in that decoupage image with the carbon paint color. And then I'm just gonna continue, like I said, to add two coats of this paint to the remainder of this jewelry box. So next up, we're going to add some areas of white to this jewelry armoire, again, using Italian ivory. I wanna add this color mainly on the corners and on some areas on the outside of the trim because my inspiration behind this design is an aged copper penny. And I have seen some that have that kind of white powdery type of age mixed in with the greens. So that's what I'm trying to mimic here with this Italian ivory paint. I found that the real trick for me personally to achieve an aged paint look is to toggle back and forth between adding layers of dark and light paint or vice versa. So bear with me because this piece is going to be getting quite a few distressed layers of paint from here on out to achieve the weathered copper inspired patina look that I am going for. I'm going to be doing a two-tone blend to mimic the look of an old penny. I'm gonna be using this custom mixed dark green and this autumn sage. Both of these are part of the chalk style line of paint by Paint Couture. And I'm going to be doing what I call a dirty blend, meaning this does not need to be perfect. In fact, I want the white and I want the black to be showing through. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add my light green color to the middle and my dark color on the outside. I have a paintbrush for each color that I'm using, 
And here in a little bit, you're gonna see that I'm going to lightly mist over this freshly added paint. And then I'm going to use a neutral blending brush or a brush that has no paint on it. This one's by Bella Vanivari. Again, it's available on the All Paint Products website. And I'm simply just going to brush back and forth over the two colors of paint at that dividing line. I'm a very heavy handed person. So for me, the key to blending was learning to use light brush strokes. As you can see, I'm using up and down motions to blend this paint in on the sides and back and forth motions on the bottom. And I was really happy with that highlight we got in the middle on the first blend, so I'm going to let that dry and move on to the front. For the legs, I want them to be blended from light to dark, so I'm adding the dark green color onto the top, and here I'm coming through with the light chalk style color, and I am adding it onto the bottom, and I'm simply just brushing it upward into that green. Like I said earlier, we're not going for perfection here. We want an aged style paint look, so I'm not covering up a lot of that white and black that we added earlier. And for this middle blend, I want there to be again that highlight in the middle, so I'm adding the light color in the middle. I'm putting the dark green on either side of that paint, and then again, I'm taking my neutral blending brush and I am just top brushing, excuse me, back and forth at that dividing line with a very gentle hand. And I'm gonna follow the same process as earlier to blend in this decoupage paper. I'm dry brushing along that texture and the decoupage image to blend it in um, with the green. And I'm being heavier handed along the outside of the image. Um, you'll see here in just a bit that I actually came back through and I wiped back some of the green that I had added over the top um, because like I said, I really want this white to be showing through. And then I just continued on with that two-toned blend for the sides as well. Once that first coat of paint had time to dry, I came back through and did a second blend over the entire jewelry box. And here's the blend after I was all done. I absolutely love how the legs blend from light to dark and I love this trim right here on top with that white on it. It really gives it that aged um, look that I was going for. So let's move on to the next step. So like I said earlier, this uh, paint finish is all about the layering. So up next, again, I'm gonna be using Italian Ivory and I'm gonna be taking this color and I'm gonna be dry brushing it over the entirety of the jewelry box. Dry brushing, again, you're wiping off the majority of your paint and then lightly brushing over your design. As you can see, it's catching over all of the texture, the raised stencil, and of course, the beautiful mold work. Now we're gonna go back to using that darker carbon color. For this technique, I'm going to be adding this paint and using it almost as a type of glaze. I'm brushing it randomly on the trim as well as the mold work. And then I'm getting very close with my misting bottle and spraying it down thoroughly. This is a really great way to add an aged paint look to the trim as well as to the mold work. As you can see, I have a rag here and I'm using that to wipe off any drippage, especially being careful around these drawers because I really don't want any paint to get on that beautiful velvet lining because I don't want to have to reline this guy. Next up, I'm gonna be cutting up these Gilded Floral Rub-On Transfers by Redesign with Prima to add some white flowers to this design. I really wanted to add flowers that were white because they symbolize both remembrance as well as new beginnings. So once I have cut out my transfers and I have a design in mind, I'm going to remove the white backing 
and place this transfer where I would like. Then I'm going to burnish over top of the entire design with the little wooden stick that comes with. Then I'm going to start working from one side of the design to slowly pull the plastic off, burnishing as I go along, leaving the transfer behind. And then I just use a razor to cut the transfer if need be to be able to open the drawer. Once cut, just remember to burnish that edge. Once my transfers were in place, I took a fine grit sandpaper and I sanded them back to distress and age them to match the piece. I absolutely love that you can customize decoupage images um, to your artistic delight. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some highlights. This is an acrylic paint pen. I find these um, very easy to use when I'm hand painting like this. And I am, like I said, I'm just adding highlights to the roses. I'm gonna add some highlights to her hair, the angel wings, as well as to her lace floral outfit. I'm also going to um, kind of trace around her arms so that way it kind of extends them and adds like, that beautiful highlight that makes it look like this image is really truly painted on to this piece. And these are the results so far. We just have one last layer of light color paint to dry brush over the molds and the erased stencil design to again, add that highlight. Next up, we're gonna to move to the final detail that really brings this copper piece together. I'm gonna to be creating my own heavily pigmented metallic paint and I'll be using this Bronze Perfect Pigment Powder by Pink Tour. And I am going to be mixing it with their Extreme Guard Gloss Top Coat. It's important to use a high gloss product to mix this with so you don't lose any of that high metallic sheen. And just like before, I'm going to be dry brushing this over the molds texture and on some of the race stencil designs here and there. I absolutely love making my own metallic because dry brushing can take quite some time due to the nature of the technique. But with my own custom mixed that is super heavily pigmented, I get the look that I'm going for almost immediately. Another idea is that you could mix this bronze pigment powder with say a bronze metallic paint and that would make it that much easier for you to get that nice rich pigmented color that you are going for. And I sealed this entire piece with Paint Couture's Extreme Guard Top Coat. And here is an up close look at Pennies from Heaven, the mixed media piece of furniture art that we created with a weathered copper patina paint finish. Thanks so much for watching up to this point, guys, but don't go anywhere because for the top of this jewelry armoire, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to create this authentic and beautiful patina inspired paint finish using a variety of textures and uh, Paint Couture's Luxe Metallic Paint. So let's get started on that side of the project. I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Crust Texture to start this project off, and I'm gonna be using a small brush to add quote unquote veins of texture to the top of this jewelry box. We'll get back to that in a second, but let's talk about this crust. So this is an acrylic plaster that is mixed with a natural mineral that creates this gritty, almost salt wash type texture. And I've scooped quite a bit of this product out um, into another container to use because I've learned that I am super messy and I can't quite close my lid to the crust texture container after I'm done with said project. So it's better for me to scoop some out into another container and if there's any left over, I will just put that back when I am done. Okay, so let's get back to talking about this texture. If you look at patina, it's kind of like algae and the way that it sprawls or spreads out. It has varying layers of veins that usually run at an angle. So that is what I'm trying to mimic here by using the crust texture to make thicker and thinner lines of this texture that most importantly are not straight and like I said, run at an angle.
And this is what it looked like when I was all done adding the crust texture over top. As you can see, um, everything is at kind of an angle and there are definitely varying amounts of this texture in areas. There are some thinner and thicker. And up next, I'm gonna be sanding back this texture after it has had time to dry. At this point, you can just use your own artistic discretion as to how much texture you want to leave on here for two reasons. Um, for tactile reasons, you might like the feel of a lot of texture. And secondly, the, the more lifted or the more texture you have, the easier it is actually to paint this patina type finish because you're going to be doing a lot of dry brushing. This is what it looked like when I was all done sanding down the top. As you can see, it already has um, this wonderful kind of texture and variegated look to it, but we're gonna add even more. So we're gonna be using Pinkator's embossing medium. I'm gonna be using a gloved hand and I am going to be stipling or dabbing this texture where there is no texture on the piece. It's easy to see because it's where the wood is still th showing through. So where the wood is still showing through right there, I am going to add embossing medium right over top. As you can see, I'm not being extremely heavy handed when I am adding this embossing medium, but you can add the embossing medium thick or thin to your own preference. And again, here is an up close look at what it looked like when we were done with that step. Once that layer of texture had time to dry, I'm not going to sand it down. I'm just gonna go straight into painting the top. Again, I'm using the two green colors and I'm going to just add these colors and random areas here over the top. Then I'm gonna spritz it with water before blending them together using a painter's sponge in a dabbing motion. Again, this does not need to be perfect. I just wanna have a two-toned look and I added two coats of this blended paint before moving on to the next step. Next up, I'm going to again be using Pink Couture's Italian Ivory and I'm gonna be dry brushing this color over the texture on this top. Right here is a really good example of why you need to um, unload the paint on your brush before you try a dry brushing technique. As you can see, my paintbrush was overloaded and it did not catch on the texture. In fact, it just left a big blot of white. So I went back through, wiped off my brush, and then I began dry brushing. Um, I'm going to add varying um, layers of this white paint. I'm gonna add it thicker in some areas and then thinner in others. Once I was done with that step, I came through with Coastal Breeze. This is a beautiful, a kind of sky blue metallic paint and this is part of Paint Couture's Luxe metallic paint line and I'm going to be doing the exact same thing. I'm going to be dry brushing thicker and thinner layers of this paint over top of this design. And here's a quick up close look at what we have down so far. Up next, we're gonna continue with the dry brushing technique, but we're gonna be using gemstone. This is kind of a darker aquamarine metallic color. But this time I'm going to take this color and I'm gonna be dry brushing it over the areas where we added the crust texture. Next up, I'm gonna be using Copperhead. This is one of Paint Couture's metallic glazes, and I'm gonna be using it to hand paint some additional diagonal veins on this design. I am just using a small artist brush, and I only have just a small amount of this glaze just on the tip. 
And I'm gonna dab this product again, not in a straight line, but rather in a diagonal direction, blending the outside edges of these copper veins into the surrounding area, which I found to be much easier with this glaze than with a metallic paint that I have used in the past. So that's why I'm using a glaze versus a paint for this step. It just makes my job easier. And for the last and final layer, we are gonna be using that same custom bronze color I made earlier using that bronze perfect pigment powder and then mixing it with a gloss top coat. I am going to be dry brushing several layers of this color directly over where the crust texture is to really create a pop of bronze color there to really give this piece a lot of dimension. I'm also going to be dry brushing it over where we added the embossing medium texture. And here is an up close look at that hand painted patina top when we were completely done with all of those layers of dry brushing. If you are still here, thank you so very much for watching guys. I'm Renee, I am the owner and artist behind Chicly Reclaim Decor and I am also a very grateful member of the Pink Couture creative team. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial where I shared with you how to create this copper patina finish and how to create this beautiful piece of mixed media furniture art. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Pink Tour channel so you don't miss out on any of these tutorials from the Pink Tour creative team. And I hope I've inspired you to pick up a paintbrush and do a little creating of your very own.